Krishna Father. Once again, I'd like to welcome each one of you to our uh, Thanksgiving worship presentation here at the uh, central headquarters of the kingdom, New Jerusalem, Davao City, to all KLCs all over the Philippines and all over the world. The Father's almighty blessings uh, shall be upon all of you. For you may be seated, brothers and sisters, in all KLCs all over the world joining me today. Greet each one with a kingdom smile and say the Father's blessings be upon all of you. Praise the Father. You may all be seated. Praise the Father. You know, in this world, uh, there are two realities. Spiritual reality that you can only attain by faith and a secular or material reality in which you are in today. The material and secular reality is but a dream when it comes side by side with the spiritual reality. Spiritual reality is permanent, while the material physical reality is just like a vapor of smoke. Now you see it, and then you don't. So we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. Faith means it transcends your physical and secular or material reality. You don't see the things that are happening now. You will see the things that are happening in the spirit because they are the ones that will become permanent in your life. So that people who come into the kingdom and join me, they should walk by faith. That's why the word of God says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those that come to him, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Raise your awareness by faith to that level of understanding so you would be able to see what I am trying to say. Without that, you are just a material three-dimensional being who, when you listen to me, will not understand anything I say, even if you stay here for 100 years. You'll never get it. You'll just remain a three-dimensional being. That's why faith is very important in uh, my ministry towards all those that will come and sign into the covenant. Faith is very, very important. Without faith, you are nothing. Without faith, you're blind. Without faith, you are just walking in darkness. You see nothing. But when your eyes of faith are open, you would see the spiritual reality that is happening in this world today. I saw this 36 years before it happened. I saw it because it was already promised by the Almighty Father that he will advance his kingdom, that he will bless his kingdom, that everything that I touch will be blessed by him. So without that, you are just walking blind. Without that, your level of understanding will just be three-dimensional. You will never understand me, even if you stay here for a hundred years. After you live, you live here, you go into your secular rea reality, and that is the material and physical reality that you have, you'll forget all about this because you did not understand it. You did not get it. There's nothing into it. And so what happens is that your soul will just deteriorate, and then when you die, you will be in one place of the two destinies, hell or heaven. And there are many people who have come and uh, go, and uh, they did not get the spiritual reality 
that I'm talking about. While I'm here today, and you see me, physical, material, and I'm living according to the mind of men of the outside world, living in my secular and material reality, of a truth I am not, because I am a spirit with a body. Where my spirit dwells, that is where I am. So when you have faith, faith calls on the things that are not as though they are. It calls on the things that are not, that are not seen as though they are seen already. So I dwell in that reality. While I was in Tawayong eating bananas for five years, I'm already here. My spirit is already here. I live like a hundred years before my time. I'm already seeing these things. So, sooner or later, the things that you see in the spirit will come to pass. If you read uh, Hebrews chapter 11, these are the heroes of faith. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, how did they become heroes of faith? Because they did not believe in the physical, material, secular reality that they are dwelling at that time. Because that is just an illusion. It's not real. What is real is what God wants you to see by the eyes of your faith. So when Abraham was promised by God, you will have a son. The secular, material, physical reality says no. It's impossible. But the spiritual reality says yes, nothing is impossible. After one year, he had a son. Abraham, I promise to you that your descendants will be as the stars in heaven and as numerous as the sons of the sea. Abraham did not dwell in his secular material reality because he only lived over a hundred years and then he died. But he did not stagger in his faith. He kept on believing God. Now, Abraham's spirit is with us. Look at his material and secular and, uh, and uh, uh, physical being at the time. You won't be able to believe because he was just a nomad traveling from one desert to another without any civilization that you can see. But now, the Arabs and the Jewish people are the descendants of Abraham. There's uh, more than a billion Muslims. Their father is Abraham through Ismail. There are millions of Jewish people all, all over the world. They're all calling Abraham as their father. The church age who believes in Jesus Christ, although they are wrong in changing the Holy One to the Holy Three, they all by faith claim Abraham to be the father of their faith. We in the kingdom nation, we are right on the target of calling our uh, father Abraham to be the father of our faith. And we are the real descendant because material, physical, and spiritual were used together and now we are here enjoying the blessings that the Father has promised to Abraham when he was still physically alive. Those happens uh, thousands of years ago. Now it's a reality. Praise the Father Almighty. That is the spiritual reality I'm talking about. And many people don't see that. Even those who came here and promised to become kingdom citizens, they don't see what I see. They don't see what you see. They are blind to it. All they see is what they have today. Materialistic. All they see is the money they get today. All they see is what the food they get today. All they see is the dress that they can wear today. All they see is the pleasure of the day. After that, it's no more. Those people will not go to heaven. <laughs> they will go back to their home places. 
as if they didn't see the goodness of God. Because it's true, they didn't see it. They're blind. They don't know what spirit, spiritual reality is. Their three-dimensional thinking did not come up to that. But thank the Father that all of us who stayed in the kingdom nation are here. And what we see is not the material reality that we see today. But the result of that is the spiritual that came into being today. So what you see in the kingdom right now is all the Father's will that I have seen 36 years ago. It's now a material reality. But don't mistake it for only material. It is a spiritual reality at first. Why, why would these material things of the kingdom come into being? Why this physical material things come into being? Because they happen in the spiritual first. Anything that happens, happens in the spiritual first. Before they can see, manifest themselves in the material. I'm just giving you a lesson of faith 101. So you will see that uh, you will not be mistaken in, 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 in looking at me. And say, I am carnal, I am material, I am physical. I'm not. I wear suits like a modern man. <laughs> but inside of me is a spiritual being that has been there thousands of years ago. His name is Jesus Christ. He is my father in the spirit. He is our father in the spirit. We are born by what he said in his word. Praise the Father Almighty. So, when I declared war against <laughs> spirituality versus carnality, the first mountain was spirituality versus religiosity. And many people have now come into the realization of that. There is no more war there. They now believe that there's an appointed son. They now believe that whatever... Uh, I say from the word of the Fo Almighty Father being delivered through the man of revelation are all realities that will get you to heaven. There's no more question about that. Religion and denomination in the churches have failed and they know it already. They are defeated in the sense that spirituality versus religiosity, spirituality won over that. Obedience by repentance, commitment, dedication, loyalty, is the language that will get you to heaven. None other will do. Obedience only to the words of Jesus Christ will get you to heaven. Not religion, not denomination. All the people before were blind to that. They didn't know that. They didn't see it. But now, most of the people that have stayed with me, whether in the kingdom nation or all, all of those who are out of the kingdom nation but are followers of this ministry, now understood that. They don't persecute me because of that anymore. Because they saw now the reality, their eyes of faith being opened. Yes, it is true. Now Jesus Christ is alive in the body, embodied in his word, in the appointed son. They saw that. They already believed that. I've won over that mountain. The last mountain to be destroyed is spirituality versus carnality. Carnality, the son will triumph over it. As I declared it, there is a waging war of spirituality versus carnality. So let us look at the attitude of the heart. So what is the attitude of your heart today? The heart is the seat of all the operations of human life as well as the center or nucleus of spiritual activity. Proverbs 4.23 and Matthew 6.21. This is what it says. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Your heart is not really here. Your heart is your mind. <laughs> Why does it say heart? When talking about heart, it doesn't talk about the organ that pumps blood through the uh, extremities of your, of your uh, body. It's not. The heart there talks about your life. It talks about the issues of life that comes 
in the mind. You can live without a heart. Put an artificial heart, you can live. But you cannot live without a mind. Oh, why am I living, pastor? You're just mindless, but you have a mind. You're just crazy, but you have a mind. <laughs> That's why you, you can still talk, you can still live, but, you know, crazy people are crazy people. Whatever they do, they are crazy, but they have a mind. But it's only crazy. Matthew 6, 21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Your mind evolves from the feelings that you have that comes from your heart. That's why if the mind is disturbed, the heart will pump faster. Isn't it? When the mind is troubled, you get the blood pressure of a person, it shoots up to 140, 150, over 100. Because they are interconnected. So when it talks about the heart, it goes to the mind. Mind, heart, heart, mind. They are all connected. Your, your feelings, your, your emotions are in your heart. You feel it in your heart. When you're afraid, you feel it in your heart. But it goes from the brain. From the brain to the heart. What is in your brain goes into your heart. If you are clean here, you will have a clean heart. If you are dirty here, you have a dirty heart, dirty feelings, dirty emotions. They are all interconnected. There's just uh, like a few feet away. Two feet away from the brain is the heart. But they are interconnected. And so, let's be careful about the attitude of our heart. The attitude of our mind. Don't let your brain control you. You control your brain. When you, ha you, when you have a sound mind, you are controlling your brain because there is power in the brain. Power to destroy and power to build. You know? Like James said, the tongue is a little member of the body, but it can burn a whole village, a whole city by gossip. By just one saying, by just one word, it can burn the whole village. Where does that come from? It comes from here. Cannot control the tongue. The mind cannot control the tongue. That's why gossipers will never go to heaven. All gossipers will go to hell. All gossipers will go to hell. They, only, they don't only destroy their souls, they destroy the souls of others. So all of those that spreads fire and poison will all ultimately answer and they will give an account of how many souls they have destroyed and their reward will be hell. Yes, all gossipers will go to hell. Gossipers that destroy souls, that burn souls, they will all go to hell. In fact, their souls are already in hell. They just have a body here used by Satan, Lucifer, the devil, but their soul is no longer there. When you are not, when you are not conscionable of what you're doing, your, your soul is already in hell. Because if you still have a soul there, you'll have a conscious mind. Consciousness still respects goodness. Consciousness, when you have a soul, even though how bad your soul is, if it's still there, it will respect kindness. It will respect goodness. It somehow can be a heart that can say gratitude, thankfulness. But when you don't have a soul, and the devil goes into it, and you are still alive physically, but it is the devil maneuvering inside, you are heartless. You don't care about souls. You are not thankful. You are not grateful. You are cruel. It, you don't mind what goes out of your mouth. If it burns souls or not, it does not matter to you. The more fire you create, the better. When you are doing that, it is the devil that is now inside of you. Your soul, you already have deposited in hell. You already sold it. Don't say to me that the Illuminati's uh, members sold their souls to hell. 
gossipers who burns and kills souls, they already have deposited to the devil's hands their souls there are already in hell. Believe me, because I know. I toured hell before. I toured heaven and I toured hell. I was a tourist. Five years in, in, in Tamayo, I went to those places by faith. Paul said, I don't know if I was in the body or I was in the spirit. But I was taken to those places where natural man cannot go. I was a tourist in hell. And I was a tourist in heaven. And I saw those people in hell. The gossipers, all they have are tongues pasted on walls of darkness. Wagging tongues. Who are those, Lord? Those are the gossipers. <laughs> those are the gossipers. Where is their body, Lord? Look at that and the depth of the valleys of hell. Burning. Those are their bodies. But their tongues are all displayed on the walls of darkness. Why are those tongues dif di different kinds of tongues? That's what happened. And many more. Maybe uh, I will write a book about that. And, and I will tell all in that book what I have seen in hell and those that will go there. And I uh, already said to you, uh, the color coded demons, red demons, yellow demons, brown demons, and then they, yeah, they uh, exhibit uh, those attitudes that are not that are uh, against the will of the Father, you think they just have uh, attitude problems. Every negative and every bad attitude, every ba, is a demon in hell, lurking in your being. And you know how many can inhabit you? Not only one. Those one that came out of you, that one that came out of you, come back again and, and, and find you swept clean and empty, will invite another seven devils that are worse than him. And your last uh, state will be worse than the first. So that is what in uh, Matthew 12, 12 25, 45 says. But only seven? You know how many? If uh, really... Uh, you will be inhabited by demons and you lose your, you lose your sanity. Even 2,000 demons can, can inhabit your body. Even 2,000 demons can inhabit your body. I saw dogs infested with fleas, infested with, uh, with ticks. I saw dogs in YouTube, you know. Look at those dogs infested with ticks. So gross to see. Those are the uh, analogy I can use as an example of demons living inside of you that you don't see. They're like ticks inside of you, inhabiting your soul and spirit. And every one of them sucks the life out of you. That's why people who have bad breath, When you talk to them, the, 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 the bad breath of the demons comes from within and then goes out. Those are demonic spirits that are inhabiting you here inside. So, check it out. <laughs> oh, Pastor, I have bad breath. No, you only have cavities in your teeth. You just go to the dentist, it will be okay. But people have good teeth. They brush their teeth, they put alcohol inside their mouth and gargle Listerine, but still have bad breath. There's demons living in you inside. And they are the ones emitting that bad odor. Because demons are dirty. Demons are smelly. I know, because I was involved in a spiritual battle for five years. So... Remember what I'm saying right now. Because 
I am close to winning already. The mountain of carnality is already down to the hips and there are just a few demons that are hiding behind it. And I will chase and kill them all <laughs> by the word of God. So unless a man's heart is implanted by the word of God, it will be dominated by the spirit of disobedience. His heart is inclined to do what is evil. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. This is what it says. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mm. An impure heart is the fountain of all evil thoughts. Uh, Mark 7, 21 to 23 and Titus chapter 1 verse 15. Verse 21, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. 23, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. All this comes from within. These are demons from hell. Look at those. Uh, evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these are evil things coming from within and defile the man. That makes you dirty because each one of those are demons from hell. It's one of those, are demons from hell. Mm. Titus 1.15. Verse 15. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Very clear. The heart must be cleansed and renewed to be aligned once again to the will of the Father. Psalms 51.10, Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Mm. Verse 26, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Mm. Exposing the works of uh, carnality in order to defeat it. Two forces are taking control of our hearts and minds in the spiritual battle. Forces of spirituality versus forces of carnality. They are now present in the journey of the kingdom nation in 36 years. Now I am addressing this because all my canons in the spirit are pointed to this mountain to finally flatten it and destroy it and all the demons hiding behind it will all be defeated and conquered. That is where death is coming from. So I am in this battle today. You are in this battle today. So the devil is massing all of his forces of carnality and his cannons are also pointed at us. And my cannons are also pointed at him. So, will there be casualties on both sides? Maybe there will be casualties of those that uh, are not pure in heart, that remain carnal, that are walking only on to the three-dimensional things of this world, that are only here in the kingdom because of money, because of support. They are only here because they look at the good life, not the eternal life, but the good life. Especially now that the kingdom is blessed. Many would want to come here. First of all, they don't see the eternal life, but the good life. Like those deceivers who came from the bundaks of uh, other places, 
They came here. I thought they were looking for eternal life. But in their minds, they were looking only for material life in the kingdom. Oh, the kingdom is blessed. I'd like to affiliate there. I'd like to go there. In guise of uh, joining us to become spiritual and to find salvation, that was really not their choice. That was really not their, not, not their intention. Their intention was really just to find money. They took advantage of the openness of the kingdom because that is the command of the Father to me. Son, accept everyone that comes and treat them uh, and uh, treat their soul like the Good Samaritan. They are wounded in the spirit. Let them come. But the only thing I would like for them to first know is seek, the first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, this is one thing that is very critical in the kingdom. For people who would come when the kingdom is already blessed like this, you don't know their intention. But when the kingdom was eating bananas and bad fish and, and, rotten, and rotten vegetables, then they come, you know that they are really looking for salvation because there's nothing. There's no money. There's no good food. There's no good life. There is no good clothes. There's no good dwellings. We, have, we don't even have mosquito nets. When we wake up in the morning, we're all full of mosquito bites. So when somebody joins us, we know that they are sincere in looking for salvation. But now that the kingdom is blessed, I, I, I have doubled my discernment. What are they came for? Did they come for the allowance? The honorarium? Did they come to, 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 uh, to uh, have a good life and uh, never think about going hungry because the kingdom has a lot of food? <laughs> and good food? <laughs> and the kingdom can provide all the uh, clothes that they need and nice clothes and can provide honorarium for all of the full-time workers every month. Is that what they came in for? My mind is already dwelling in that. Sometimes I try to find your soul. You know? Is, is it really eternal life that they came for? So all of those that are here in the kingdom and uh, are listening to my message today, if you have passed the test, you will own the kingdom, just like I own the kingdom. Just like let the Father let me own the kingdom because I have overcome. He said, rejoice, I have overcome the world. Galatians 5.17 Verse 17, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. See that? <laughs> for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if they are defeated, they are hit by carnality, they would try to pull the kingdom down to carnality and I am here, I said, I am pulling you to spirituality. And you are used by the enemy because you cannot see. You are only a three-dimensional being. All you see is the now. You don't see the yesterday and tomorrow what you will be. You don't see that by faith. And then we are trying to pull unto each other. Pulling me to carnality. Pulling you to spirituality. Later on, something will give. Who will give? Me? I'm here. You cannot pull me to carnality. I'll pull you to spirituality. If you cannot be pulled to spirituality where I am, something should give. I'll cut you up. Oh, but you will not forget me. I've been there for seven years. Yes, yes, I'll forget you. I'll remember you one day and after that you became carnal. I will not remember even your name. So don't say... You've been with me and you can pull me to your level of carnality. No, you can't. That is when you will see that I'm not like you. 
That is when you see, I'm not carnal. I'm only pretending to be carnal. Why? So I can get you out of that carnality and put you on the standing of spirituality like me to be a real son and daughter of the Father Almighty that he can trust with his work wherever you go. The devil cannot hit you anymore. I send Bebot uh, wherever. Was he hit by the bullet of carnality? No. I can send Ping. I can send Ingrid wherever. I can send Nening. I can send Didi. I can send anyone. Are they hit by the bullet of carnality? No, because they have defeated it. They are the ones defeating it. And then they are the ones instrument in expanding the kingdom. And it is an insult to the enemy, to the devil, because I'm only using girls and women. The weakest link in the strength that the, that the devil says is the weakest link. I am only sending the weakest link, not even the, 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 the men. Okay, I'll send you there to destroy your carnality, to destroy your deception. I'm only sending these uh, warriors there. That is how strong the kingdom is. It, it cannot be defeated, even though you try, even if the devil is your father, because I already met him in Tamayan five years ago. But there is this, uh, can you read that in Tagalog? 517. Pastor, ito ang sinasabi. Sapagkat ang laman ay nagnanasa ng laban sa Espiritu. Nagnanasa ng laban sa Espiritu. At ang Espiritu ay laban sa laman. At ang Espiritu ay laban sa laman. Naglalaban yan. <laughs> laban yan. Boxing yan. Can you claim victory if you are just shadow boxing? You must meet the enemy on the ring. Bugbugan yan. Oh. Hilain kita. Paging spiritual ka ha? Hindi pwede hindi ka magis. Hindi. Laman ko. Kailangan dito ka rin sa akin. Oh, bugbugan. Sino mananalo sa atin? Pag hindi ka sumabay sa akin, putol ka. Pag hindi ka sumama sa spirituality ko. If you deny my spirituality, I will deny your carnality. But you cannot say, I did not lay down my life for you. I will lay down my life. Because that is the command. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. I have the power to lay down my life, and I have the power to take it back. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that is the power of the Son. It's only me that was given that uh, special mission. Nobody else can do that. It's only the Son can, can do that. Nobody can go into the cave of the flesh and go out alive. That's why the Father showed me this vision in Tamayo. This is a living cave. Everybody that comes into it, they just get stuck. Some are dead, some are half alive. I go in and out and take them out. That is the mountain of carnality I'm talking about. Mm. Carnality is encapsulated by the matrix of the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 1 John 2.16. That is the mountain in which all of this encapsulates the sin. The matrix of sin. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. When you win over this, and you are a soldier like the 300 of Gideon, we will win over the world in no time at all. Look what's happening, even though there are, uh, there are those who are not yet uh, processed within us. Uh, that means we are not all pure here as kingdom uh, warriors and kingdom full-time worker workers. But we are already conquering the world. How much more if we are purified like the soldiers of Gideon? We will defeat the enemy at all points. And we will spiritualize the whole world for the kingdom, for the Father, for His glory. Mr. Father. Verse 16, For all that is in the world, 
the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. Mm. Carnality robs man of spirituality by invading the innermost being. Innermost being within you. To war against the soul. 1 Peter 2.11 Verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Mm. The system of the attack, when I declared spirituality versus carnality. You see, the attack of the enemy towards me, the, spirit, the appointed son, and towards the kingdom, is all about carnality, isn't it? The devil has weaponized the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of, against me. But I am ready for that because that is why I am here as an appointed son trained in the Mayon for five years and has overcome the world. I am overcoming the world for you. My staying here is not for me. It's for all of you. If without me, you will not win. Without the appointed son giving the special powers from heaven, you will never win against this. Because this is so powerful, and this is what the devil is boasting about. When he uses the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and weaponizes it, nobody can stand against him. That's why the son must be given special powers from on high to defeat this. And I'm here for that. I'm not here to lose. I'm here to win forever. Because the one that is within me is greater than he that is in the world. Bring every thought into captivity. That's my mission. Bring every thought into captivity to obedience, to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Praise the Father. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, the lust of the flesh, lust of eyes, is not under, will not go under the thought of Christ. But I have to fight that and bring it. To obedience. Put that back. Casting down imaginations. Imaginations of carnality. And every high thing that exalted itself. Against the knowledge of God. So. When I was not. When, when, if the son is not here. Empowered. See how powerful the flesh is. I can preach for. Ten years of Spirituality. Only one word of carnality will destroy all of your 10 years of spirituality. And then you will believe carnality is more powerful. See? I am the only one exposing it like you, uh, like, like right now. When you hear one, one thought of carnality, of, of, of false accusation of carnality, and then the 10 years of you listening to me will all dissipate. And then you will have doubts. And then the devil will now play with you. That is how powerful this weapon is. When the devil weaponizes the lust of the flesh. But I am here. I will cast down that imagination. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bring it into captivity. I will captivate it. I will capture it. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought that will exalt itself against the thought or the doctrine of the Father. I will bring it into captivity. Now you are empowered. Look at the mind of Christ, of the Father Almighty that is in the appointed Son. Can I do all of this good without the Father in me? And then the devil will just, why by one bullet of the lust of the flesh accusation, will destroy all of this in your mind, and then you will live, and you will not, never see this, because you are material, because you are physical, because you are carnal. No, you are now spiritual. You are spiritual. 
I am spiritual. You are all spiritual. You see the goodness of the Father. You see how he has expanded his kingdom. You see all of this because your eyes of faith are already open. Nobody now can deceive you. You will be like the son. Loyal, obedient, committed, dedicated. Praise the Father. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That's my mission. So every thought that exalted itself against God that seemed to destroy your soul, I am here to conquer it. Are you with me? 300. Gideon. Are you with me? <laughs> Are you chosen? <laughs> Praise the Father. I like that verse. The last enemy to be conquered is death. And death is in the flesh. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. That's the last enemy to be conquered. That's why glorification is just around the corner. It's the Father. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And death is not in the spirit, but in the flesh. If you will dwell there, you'll die. Your spirit will die. Your soul will go to hell. Stick with me. Because the father and son relationship, there are things that I cannot tell you. There are things secret that I cannot tell you that the father has given me as a mission to defeat the enemy at its very core. But you will see the result. It's all in the goal of his spirituality. Nobody can drag me down to carnality. I only pretend to be carnal. I am in the flesh. Continue. I am in the flesh. But I am not of the flesh. <laughs> See, I am flesh like you. But my loyalty is not in the flesh. My loyalty is always, will always be, and shall always be, in the spiritual of doing the Father's will, no matter what. Even if you throw me into the mud, when I get up out of the mud, I'm still a diamond. I'm still as spiritual as can be. Make no mistake about that. See, everybody that don't want to become spiritual, who are very close to me, they fall by the wayside. Where am I? Did I go with them? No, no. They're loyal to their flesh. I'm not loyal to any flesh. I'm only loyal to the will of the Father, no matter what. <laughs> That's why the Son of God is manifested in the likeness of sinful flesh to condemn sin in the flesh. See? It's there. The Son of God is manifested in the likeness of sinful flesh. Pretending to be sinful and carnal like you. What's my mission? To condemn it. <laughs> to say to you, stop this one. Stop that one. Become spiritual like me right now. Let the Father own you. Do not own the Father let the Father own you and you will become spiritual like me. And you will not be hit by the bullet of carnality. Never again. The Father will use you and then eternal life will be yours. If I will be, if I will be afraid of these people, as if, they are, as if they are God. And there's only one thing to fear. is God. God said, do not fear them that kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. Fear him who is able to kill your body and put your soul to hell. Him only shall thou fear, only God. I was given a special mission for that, to save those that are in the bondage of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And take them out and tell the devil, you destroy the fallen Adamic and Avenic race, I am here to restore them into their Original state of spirituality 
and level or on the state of innocence. Praise the Father. No malice at all. The lust of the flesh is defeated. That's how powerful the Father is. Okay. Hebrews 2.14, uh, 1 John 3.8. He that committed sin is of the devil, and the devil sinned not from the beginning. For the purpose, the Son of God, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. How can you destroy the works of the devil if you will not go there and destroy it? Nobody can do that but the Son only. That's why the Son was empowered to do that. So all the scriptures will all be fulfilled. And at the end of the day, I will stand on the mountain of triumph and victory and say, Father, I have defeated all your enemies. Put them under my feet. The last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. He is, Father, the victory of the kingdom. And then even the Son will be subject to the Father. And the kingdom will be in the hands of the Father. So that he can be all in all and over all. And we are very, very close to that. Praise the Father. The effect of the Son's message is to promote his spirituality. The expected result is to produce a spiritual man out of you. Romans 8, 5 to 9. Please read. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Mm. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but mm. to be spiritually minded is life mm. and peace. 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, mm. for it is not subject to the law of God, mm. neither indeed can be. Mm. 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay. Uh, verse okay. 9. But ye are not in the flesh. Oh, but we are not in the flesh anymore, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Look at those who remain there. In death, they're talking only about it. They're so enamored about it. They, their emotions is so, inc so, so, so uh, captivated by it. They cry about it. They, 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 they have sentiments about it. <laughs> all, all about the flesh. <laughs> That's how powerful it was before the sun came. Now it is powerless. So in order to be freed from the bondage of carnality, we must crucify the flesh with the affections and lusts. Galatians 5, 24 to 25, Romans uh, 13, 14, and 1 Peter 4, verses 1 and 2. This is what it says. Verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. Mm. 25, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Verse 24, and they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. No more power. It's already crucified. It cannot do anything anymore. It has no power over those that are walking in the spirit. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, for as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. Mm, Two, that. that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will, to of, the will God. of the Father. Uprooting the tree in its entirety, not just removing the branches, Matthew 15, 13, Matthew 13, 41, John 15, 6. This is what it says. Verse 13, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father had not planted shall be rooted up. Mm. Look at that uh, revelation I have this morning. It's a, it's a tree trunk. It must be burned. That is the tree of the lust of the flesh. It must be burned. That is the second phase. When I woke up, that will be what I will do next. Burn it like I'm doing now. I am burning it right now. Verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. 
and men gather them and cast them into mm. the fire and they are burned. Now, crossing the head of the serpent with the sun conquering the flesh and the mountain of carnality, there is an assurance of victory for humanity. That's why he said in John 16:33, "Be of good cheer. The Son has overcome the world." John 16:33, please. Uh, verse 33: These things have, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. I have the overcome world. the world. <laughs> The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Whoo! Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. Now here I come for all of you. I overcame first, then for all of you. First John 5, 4. Those who faithfully, obediently followed me, you will also overcome the world. First John 5, 4. Verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith! Didn't we talk about our faith just a while ago? For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Don't look at the things now. On the process, look at the things after the processing because everything is in the goal of the spiritual. If you don't become spiritual, you are a wasted product. You will be set aside. You will be thrown away. Everything that the sun does in the conclusion and the end game of it is, is spirituality. John 1.13 Verse 13 which were born not of blood, mm. nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We are now born not of the will of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. Not of blood. That means our blood ties are nothing when it comes to salvation. That means the will of the flesh, the will of those that you came from, are not the ones that will be followed. Only the will of the Father. For salvation. The Son has abolished the enmity. Ephesians 2.14 and 16. And has now restored the communion and fellowship between man and God. And the will of the Father once again enthroned. Now in this ministry. Who had surrendered? Spirituality or carnality? Carnality has finally surrendered to the Son. There is no more enmity. Because all flesh now should follow the Son. I have conquered it once and for all. Ephesians 2, 14 to 16. Verse 14. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between mm. us. So, now we can serve the Father without the flesh bothering us. Because the wall of partition is broken down. The last of the flesh, last of the eyes is surrendered. No more last of the flesh. That will hamper or make contra to the will of the Father. No more last of the eyes. No more pride of life. That will go and rebel against the will of the Father. It's all surrendered. It's all making peace now. Who is your model? So I did the war for all of you. Revelation 3.21 uh, Verse 21 To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. All of these verses that have been read here, everywhere you go, it's all fulfilled in the life of the appointed Son. Praise the Father Almighty. Hallelujah. Woo. So when you look at the things right now, you don't look at the things in the eye of a secular human being. In the eye of a material human being only living in the three-dimensional 
uh, world. You look at them by the eyes of faith. They are now being fulfilled. Your eyes open and you have seen and you cannot be deceived by the devil anymore. Using the weaponizing of the lust of the flesh by means of accusations, by means of the cannonballs of the devil trying to destroy your faith and the kingdom and by maligning the appointed son with all of these weapons before that are so powerful. They are no longer booming and they are no longer sounding the battle. They are all silent. And it is the cannonballs of spirituality that have destroyed the mountain of carnality where the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are hiding. And the devil is now bare and naked. And he will go to where he came from, his tail between his legs, and say, bye-bye, go to hell. <laughs> we are victorious. Praise the Father Almighty. Praise the Father Almighty. Woo! So all of you who just came here and are uh, defeated by the hit by the bullets of the lust of the flesh, lust of eyes, and pride of life, how can you redeem your soul right now? I'm not saying... You don't have the chance to change your mind and repent. But it's very hard to do that now. Unless you're really, really, really understanding what I'm saying. Otherwise, you're on your rabbit hole of destruction to hell. But you cannot say, I did not lay down my life for you. You cannot say you have not tasted of the goodness and graciousness of God in your life. You cannot say that God was not compassionate. In eternal life, all of this is written. Everything you did in the kingdom is written. How did you end up in the kingdom? Did you end up a hero? A heroine? Obedient? Faithful? Committed? Dedicated? Loyal? Heart fixed? Mind made up? Until the end, loyal to the... Father through the appointed son. Like Paul the Apostle, like Peter, they all died loyal, committed, dedicated. If you're not like that, I'm telling you right now, your soul is already in hell. Look at your record. All of these are written in heaven. Even the very hairs of your heads are numbered in heaven. To whosoever will come here. I will not even look at your background. Where did you come from? Did you come from a family of extortionists? I will not accept you here. How did you live in your house? You live like a pig in a pig sty? Oh, I'll teach your cleanliness first. You don't even distinguish between a smelly house and a house that is so sweet smelling. You know, pigs don't do that. Pigs don't distinguish the smell. They like more to be in the mud. So when you take a pig and put it in a palace, the pig will not even thank you. A pig is a pig, and it's a pig is a pig. Forever a pig. But there is power to turn the pig into a human being. If the pig will cooperate, but if the pig will not cooperate, then I will let loose the pig, and the pig will go back to the muddy pig sty where he or she came from. Sorry for all of you. But the goodness of God remains the same. <laughs> the mercy and compassion of the Father remains the same. My heart as a good Samaritan will remain the same forever. Loyal, committed, dedicated, obedient only to the will of the Father. My heart is fixed, mine made up. I will do His will no matter what.
pigs also memorize those words. But those words are nothing to pigs. Because pigs only wallow in the lust of their flesh. That is all that they know. Lust of the flesh. Praise the Father Almighty. What an anniversary message that we have received today. Praise the Father Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Down here as we travel or city or country just working for Jesus our King we often cross so The truth of God's word to bring, but soon I shall cross my last river and the same. To live there forever In the place He has prepared for me When I cross the to feel 
Father Almighty, we thank you so much for this man of revelation today. We thank you, Father, for we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for all that you have done for the kingdom nation that you have established on earth for the 36 years of its existence, saving millions of souls, gathering all of your children all over the world. Thank you also for the 18th anniversary of the declaration of sonship to the whole world, making known to the whole world that the son you have chosen to be the inheritor of everything is already here. Using me as your audible voice, your residence, your temple, to speak to all of your people who are in the grave of sins, that when they listen to the voice of your appointed son, they will be resurrected, those that have done good into life, those that have done evil unto the condemnation. We thank you, Father, that many who have heard your voice through your appointed son has come to the light has received the message and are now on the process of signing the covenant, the agreement that your will be done on this earth today as the thousands and the many thousands of children all over the world who are already in the ark of their salvation. These two who have newly come, Father, have heard your voice and now they followed it because your sheep know your voice. And in the process of the baptism of water and the baptism of fire, give them strength to be able to overcome and conquer the world of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Come out as sons and daughters finished product just like their mother the appointed son conquering all for you and for your glory thank you father I thank you also for the answer to all of our collective prayers for healing financial blessings that continues to be poured out and to the visitation of your salvation through enlightenment, through the man of revelation. Thank you, Father. Our hearts are swelling with thanksgiving, glory and honor only in your name, in the name of our almighty Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Praise the Father.